Here we are sitting down with Serato Studio. I'm gonna find a couple of samples, a couple of things that uh, sparked my interest. So yeah, you know, I found the sample, and like I said, that, that first chord that it hit, something about it was just reminiscent of Exhibit A to me. You know, not the sound, but just the actual chord itself. So uh, took that, looped it up, simple two bar loop, and then I started thinking about uh, just basic piano chords that could go behind it. Found a stock piano from Serato Studio. Um, it's a little lo-fi, but I actually dig it. Uh, I just started playing different riffs against the main sample to see you know, what I felt, and this is what I came up with. Again, very simple, you know. Uh, I don't want anything that's gonna be too overpowering because the mood is already feeling very laid back as it is. And that's when I actually realized that as I was playing tracks down, I'm seeing the MIDI in the piano roll, but I'm also watching the uh, audio render in real time, which is really dope. So from there, I had a basic groove, and I think for me, the next step at that point is pretty much just um, getting some basic, a basic drum pattern. And I like that, like it's not, you know, it's not a straight 16th, but it's not like a super swinging triplet either. It's just enough of a nudge. You know, I like to keep things a little bit loose. So for me, adding just a slight bit of swing uh, on the drums just to offset against the other percussive sounds uh, is one of my old tricks. So from there, simple hi-hat. And I purposely had left the hi-hats unquantized. You know, not feeling overly processed, not feeling overly robotic. It just adds to the human element of records that sometimes people forget about when they're working inside a computer. So here we had the basic groove. I found a nice simple bass called the Hawaii Patch. Not all of us are gifted keyboard players, myself included. I'm one of the worst you'll ever hear. One of the great things about Serato Studio, we have the play and key function, which basically, you know, for the most part, allows you to almost play anything and have it sound good. No matter what notes you hit, everything's in the right key at all times. All you have to do is stay on beat. From there, we just went and added a bass line. I kind of wanted to keep the groove, like I said before, pretty simple, and just use the bass line to fill in gaps. step in this process is just finding little accent pieces. I'm really just looking for something s simple, light, like I said, like a sprinkle sound. So now after a little bit of searching, we found a, a patch that we like. It's called Anime Wet Percussion. I like the fact that it gets really dark and kind of grungy towards the bottom. A lot of times as I'm working you know, with an artist, I don't like to go too crazy. I like to really just give them the basic bed and some indications of what the different movements um, of the song will sound like. And then once they deliver their vocal, then we go back and kind of build around that. Because we want to give the song a little bit of a lift. I usually tend to do that with strings and pads and what have you. So we've got a patch here called the Limehouse Pad. And we're gonna use it very sparingly just to give the track a little shimmer and shine in the right places. Now we have a basic idea for a track. Um, and there's still a lot of different things that we can do with it, a lot of different ways that it can go. But now you have a problem because your artist doesn't like the key that it's in. They can't sing in that register. Um, one of the great things about Serato Studio is that we can change that instantly. I've actually, this is dope. I mean, I've never seen an implementation of being able to change the key of a record this quickly done as well as it's been done here. 
Uh, super dope. Right now the record is in the key of C. Just now it's in C. Uh, now it's in D. Wow, that sounds great. Well, I rarely just pitch down that drastically. You went down like four or five notes. It sounds good. It doesn't sound unnatural. It actually sounds a bit more darker and sinister uh, the, way I was, the way I've always thought it should sound. Wow. All right, I'm feeling a lot differently about this idea than I did two minutes ago. Um, another great feature, uh, changing the BPM on the fly. Right now we're at 87 BPM. We'll bring the drums back in. We'll go to 97. Tempo's changing. Pitches are not changing at all. We'll go to 107. That's in the key of F minor. Now we're gonna go up to C. Drums haven't changed the key at all. That's also super helpful because a lot of times, you know, drums, transposing drums pitch-wise is not like transposing music where it's just another key down or two or three keys down or up. You know, your drums can easily get very mushy sounding and flat or very sharp and chipmunky sounding, you know, when you pitch shit them too drastically. So that's actually one of the, one of the features I'm probably the most impressed with overall. So now that I'm listening to it, you know, I listen to that sample section and I'm like, all right, wait a minute. Let's just give it a little bit more drama. So I just added uh, some automation to uh, to the intro to filter the sample a bit. So here's the end result of what that sounds like. And that was super simple. I just went to the sample track that the sample was on, clicked on this little robot automation icon, and draw and right now i'm automating the filter making me do whatever it is i want to do so that's basically it you know we have a basic arrangement of what we uh like the song to sound like um so if you want to check your arrangement you know you go to your song mode and boom straightforward super simple you know at this point the tools are there it's up to you to use them and once that's done you want to take your track export it get it to uh the artist writer uh you hit the master button hit export song and you can either export stems and get every single track individually or you can just export a two track and get busy with it. I'm gonna export this and we out. You know, I think what's maybe a little bit different or unexpected about my Serato Studio sound pack is making as much as possible from scratch. It's not hard to find an 808 sound pack in 2019. So I kind of wanted to just really take it a step further, add my personal touch, add my personal sonic qualities, you know, go actually, go get on the drum kit, smack the snare around, smack the sticks around, you know, bang on different things in my house and just pick up different sounds, processing things with more than just plugins and actually like going and tracking down some tubes and some solid state compressors, you know, and doing my best to try to recreate the essence of some drum samples that I fell in love with growing up. Not just the style of playing, but the sonics of it as well. I grew up listening to a lot of different types of music. I make a lot of different types of music, and I kind of just try to cover the gamut of not all of my tastes, because we'd be here until next year doing this, but enough to give people a bit of a variety. To me, there is no norm when it comes to, to percussion. Anything can be percussive, you know what I mean? The human voice is a percussive instrument, a, a brick wall you know, as a percussive instrument. The sound of this key being pressed is a percussive instrument, you know? Aside from the sound that it makes when the key is pressed you know, electronically, that's percussion. Part of my benefit of my age is just knowing how certain sounds were processed or in different eras of popular music. You know, I have the advantage of being young enough to understand what works right now, but being old enough to understand how those sounds were created. If I had to put it in a nutshell, I think for me, what I'm trying to do with this pack is just basically blend a lot of my different worlds together, past and present.